So what you see in front of you uh, is a aluminum beam uh, which has been instrumented with the continuous FBG fiber optic cable. We've instrumented it with about 10 meters of the FBG fiber. Uh, it's tacked down with this uh, two-part epoxy which is the brown uh, or amber color that you see uh, down there. It's just a, a nice room temperature cured two-part epoxy. Uh, it's M-Bond AE10. And then just because this is a demo piece uh, that Sensoron is going to be using uh, for many, many demonstrations to come, people will be working around it, uh, we've actually used RTV silicone uh, as a top layer just for protection. So we can drop things on this and the fiber will, will survive just fine. Uh, to connectorize it, we just uh, cut off a standard off-the-shelf FCAPC patch cord, did the splice, and then protected the splice point and tacked everything down with more RTV silicone. Uh, at the very end, you can see that I've left the tag end of FBG fiber unbonded. Uh, this was originally to allow us to clip the end to reduce termination reflections uh, as, per as per standard procedure. Uh, however, uh, you will find with the Summit interrogation platform uh, that that is no longer necessary. So I could have just kept on epoxying all the way to the end of the fiber. Uh, so the pattern that has been installed uh, after, of course, the surface was abraded and thoroughly cleaned is we marked off the root, which it's just uh, four longitudinal lines, um, and they're turning at the ends at a constant radius. And that is just repeated at different locations along the span uh, of, this, of this beam. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be seeing the strain distribution from the bending of this beam. Uh, we set it up on two fixed, fixed supports, so the two edges are fixed in similar fashion, uh, where there's no rotation. So whenever I push here in the middle, the highest strains will be here on the outside, and on the outside will be high tensile strains when I push down. Uh, and then that will linearly decrease past zero somewhere around the one-third and two-third point down to the maximum compression state right at the location where I'm pushing. Uh, so what this NDE software package was able to do is at first we did not put in this little crack. We just had a, an ideal beam, an undamaged beam. Uh, we vibrated this beam randomly in different, uh, different configurations and we had the software learn what the perfect undamaged beam looked like and what the strain distributions looked like. Uh, once it uh, learned or recognized those, we then put this crack in a random location uh, with a random length and repeated the same random vibrations and uh, the NDE software was not only able to tell you exactly where the crack was, uh, but also how long it was what the reduced stiffness was in this area of the beam, as well as the uh, reduction in cross-section at this uh, point along the beam's length. Uh, so a really useful tool in the world of civil, uh, oil and gas, aerospace, automotive, just about anything where, where structures are used and structures can be damaged. So for this demonstration, uh, we are simply going to be showing the summit strain sensing capabilities for real-life structural installation. And what you will see is uh, exactly the strain distribution I described earlier with the linear changes across each one of these four longitudinal patterns. Uh, and then it's, the summit is so sensitive uh, and has such a low noise value that even just this small crack, uh, it's going to locally change the strain distribution at this area. It's going to create a strain concentration around the edges. Uh, the summit is actually able to pick that up even for such a very small crack. So on the screen, uh, now you are seeing the strain distribution output uh, for this fiber installation on this beam uh, acquired using the Summit 4-channel platform. Uh, so as I previously stated, there are four uh, longitudinal segments going down the length of this. And as I start applying some loads to this beam, you can right away see that you get this nice continuous strain distribution uh, corresponding to each of these segments. Uh, so, if I kind of hold a constant static load, you can see that that first valley, uh, right at the beginning, it starts at the point of highest tension, which corresponds to this end over here at the fixed end. That decreases to the point of lowest tension somewhere around here in the middle, and then rises back up to an equivalent point of highest tension on the other fixed side. And then that distribution is repeated three more times, as you can see, corresponding to the next three valleys. Those little small valleys uh, at the peaks, at the points of highest tension, correspond to the turnarounds. Uh, so those are the constant radius turnarounds uh, between each of these longitudinal segments. 
So having this nice continuous distribution uh, is really useful because you can actually get quite a bit of information from it other than just the strain distribution. Uh, for example, I can apply a single load with my hand and start moving it around. And in this case, with this installation and this structure, the point of lowest compression corresponds to the location of my hand. So right away, you can see that you can locate any applied loads. Uh, so this is the case of just one point load. You could also apply a second point load. And so if I kind of shift the force I'm applying with each of my hands, you can see where each one is. And you can also see the ratio of force between the two, given by what's happening between those two points. Uh, that also works for distributed loads. You can uh, achieve the same thing. Uh, from this strain distribution, you can also acquire the distributed bending moment throughout this beam. You can acquire the stresses and strains, obviously. Uh, and you can also get the distributed shear forces and, as I've said, distributed loads. Uh, another thing that you can do uh, with the distri strain distribution is you can get the deflection profile of this beam. And the neat thing is, is you can do this all at the same time with one single fiber all on the same system. Uh, and we still have three more fibers to work with. So if you really wanted, you could do this, get all of those quantities, and then put on a temperature distribution. Uh, and then you still even have two left over to do other work or other measurements. Uh, so back to the original purpose of this particular demo, uh, why it was created. Uh, you can see that we have this uh, small crack. It's about one inch long. Uh, the NDE software package uh, that we were demonstrating uh, showed the ability to locate where exactly this crack was uh, and the, the size of it, how bad it was, what was the loss of stiffness in this region of the beam and, and various other effects. Uh, so you can see this and how we can do it in the strain distribution. So if I apply a load here, you can see right away on that third large valley there's uh, a peak, uh, kind of an amplified compression uh, right around where this, where this crack is occurring. Uh, that third valley corresponds to this fiber right here. And so that peak is very, very clearly seen on this fiber because of its uh, closeness to this crack. Uh, you can even see it uh, right around the second valley. If I push a little bit, you can see that smaller hump, uh, smaller in amplitude because obviously it's a little bit farther away. The effect of the crack will kind of dissipate the farther away you are from, from this structure. Uh, so that's the nice thing about fiber is you can cover a large area with a lot of sensors to make sure that you can pick up on even very small cracks like this. Uh, and you can track how they propagate, what effect they have on the, on the rest of the beam and its global performance. Stay up to date with Sensoron by following us on Twitter with the handle at Sensoron, on LinkedIn, or by following our blog. Thanks for watching and I uh, hope to hear from you soon.